Article 4, The States. Section 3, New States. New states may be admitted by the Congress into this union, but no new state shall be formed or erected within the jurisdiction of any other state, nor any state be formed by the junction of two or more states or parts of states without the consent of the legislatures of the states concerned, as well as the Congress. The first part of this is a pretty remarkable step. It's actually one of the few things that was good from the Articles of Confederation. The Northwest Ordinance of the Articles of Confederation allowed new states to be admitted to the Union on equal footing as all other states. This was a symptom or a response to the treatment of the colonies by the British during the Revolution or prior to the Revolution during the colonial period. The colonies were never on equal footing. In fact, the rallying cry, no taxation without representation, was directly related to the substandard position that the colonies held within the British government. Had the colonies had representation, one wonders if the revolution would have taken place as it did and when it did. But new states may be admitted by the Congress into this union. And each state is given what is known as the Enabling Act, passed by Congress, which allows them to become a state. In Missouri's Enabling Act, it allows the Missouri Territory to authorize the people of the Missouri Territory to form a constitution and state government. And for the admission of such state into the union, this is the key phrase, on equal footing with the original states. This clause means that no state then has a diminished role within our government. Each state will get two senators. Each state will get a representative for every, in in our case now, about 740,000 people. And that's key to understanding how the United States was able to expand and how we are now at 50 states. We do have several territories. Puerto Rico is currently probably the closest territory to becoming a state. Also in the Enabling Act, it allows Missouri Territory or whatever territory to define its borders and it puts the boundaries in it. Missouri's Enabling Act was it was passed in March 6, 1820. Missouri actually became a state August 10, 1821, once the state wrote a constitution and came up with a name. The borders of Missouri are laid out in Section 2 of the Enabling Act. There are some limitations to creating new states. States can't be formed within the jurisdiction of any other state, so we can't have a state within a state, nor can any state be formed by the junction of two or more states or parts of states without the consent of the legislature of the states concerned as well as the Congress. There are some theories out there about Puerto Rico making a 51-star state, and in order to keep that from happening, you could combine North and South Dakota. That couldn't happen by a congressional decision, but it would need the consent of both the North and South Dakota state governments in order to do that, which I believe would be unlikely. We do have an interesting uh, development in the Civil War. The state of West Virginia was originally a part of Virginia, and when Virginia seceded from the Union during the Civil War, the western counties of Virginia decided not to leave the Union, and the Congress admitted West Virginia as a state, and they did not require the permission of the Virginia state government because they were in rebellion and therefore not participating. Texas initially was meant to be split into five states because of its large size, comparatively speaking. However, each of those states would have received two senators, thus making a 10-senator increase for what would be slave territories prior to the Civil War. The Constitution goes on to say, The Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory or other property belonging to the United States, and nothing in this Constitution shall be so construed as to prejudice any claims of the United States or of any particular state. 